Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And happy November 1st. You made it through the month of October. Halloween's over. Welcome to Christmas. I am in a very, very Christmassy mood. I'm so excited about Christmas. I can't wait to get Christmas started. So let's get Christmas started. Um, and November is the month of gratitude. I will probably be talking a lot about gratitude on this channel this month. Um, for me, gratitude is an action. It's not just something that we say, you know, oh, we should feel so grateful for this. And oh, I'm so grateful for that one time a year, right? Um, gratitude is something that is a way for me to better appreciate the world. Gratitude is a way for me to better appreciate my life and better appreciate even the smallest things in my life, like the ability to get on video every day and read meditations to people out there that like to watch these and like to hear these. So, or to a good cup of coffee that I brought home with me from uh, brunch today. <laughs> this happens to be pumpkin spice, by the way. Um, and I haven't had it there the entire month of October or September. They haven't had pumpkin spice since I've been there in October or September, but they had it today, the day after Halloween. And I have to tell you, it is literally delicious. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. So, here's to some pumpkin spice. I'm very grateful for that. Um, you know, in my prayers every night, I do kind of a, uh, a mental gratitude list in my head. I've been meaning to start, for those of you that know, I've been meaning to start this gratitude notebook, I mean, since I was in Arizona, I think, so that's August. Um, so August, September, October, th for the last three months. So hopefully this month will be, maybe I'll start it today, since it's the first day of, of November, and start a actual gratitude list, and it was it's supposed to be on one side of the paper, a gratitude list, on the other side of the paper, things that I'm that make me happy, right? Because I feel like the two of those together make me greater appreciate my life and greater appreciate the things that I have and the people that I have in my life. And the older that I get, we were just talking about this at brunch today, what I realize is, and I'm, I'm somebody that likes nice things, don't get me wrong, but the time that I spend with people, like last night I went to my cousin's house and we had chili dinner. Her husband made me vegetarian three bean chili just for myself. And um, it was, you know, our immediate family. It was my husband and I and Caroline, her husband, and her son and his girlfriend, and then her stepson and his wife. And our family's very small, but I love getting together with them. And then Caroline had a couple friends over and it was just really fun. And we played games in the basement. And um, yeah, it was just a good time. It was just a really nice time. And then I came home last night and for those of you that watch my vlog, you know that I've had a really, really hard time sleeping lately because of my medicine. And um, I was so tired. And I said to Alex, I said, I think I'm gonna lay down for like an hour and a half. I got into bed at like 10.30 or 11. I think I got into bed at 10.30, but like I started trying to fall asleep about 10.50, 11 o'clock. And I said, um, I'm going to take a nap for like an hour and a half, then I get up and watch some shows because other than, I wasn't even going to make videos today. Um, I was just going to hang out with co uh, Cousin Caroline. I was just going to hang out with Cousin Caroline, Cousin Cousin, for Cousin Fun Day. Um, but then she had uh, something that she had to do this afternoon. So I was like, well, I'm just going to come home and film some videos. I've got nothing else to do and I, and I love filming videos. So, you know, we were actually today talking about people who have the ability to turn their passion into a career and like that is something I'm so grateful for you know is that I was able to do something that I love and then be able to call that a career by doing YouTube I mean like that is probably one of the things I'm the most grateful for in my life you know and there are people that want to watch my videos and that are so kind and leave me the nicest comments and when I'm sick or I'm going through something <clears throat> that reach out to me and it just, it's unbelievable, you know? People have been so supportive of my husband and my family and things like that and, um, you know, even talking about like Alex's cousin Maya when she was in the shooting in Las Vegas and so many people, you know, were so supportive about that after I told that story and, um, you know, and that's something that she still struggles with to this day. And I just, uh, people have just been, I mean, when Pee Pee passed away, people were unbelievable. When Tucker passed away, and I talked about that, people were unbelievable. The support and the kindness that I get is literally the greatest gift from this, you know? And then to be able to call it a career on top of that, I just, I feel so blessed, right? So I, I like to practice gratitude a lot, not just in the month of November when we're reminded of it, but of being thankful. But all year round and like the more that I have put it into action like on a daily basis like I was gonna say in my prayers that night the more I have put it into action 
the more it's kind of like paying it forward to some degree, which I'm a big believer in paying gratitude forward and being grateful for things that maybe you don't necessarily feel grateful for today, but you say to your higher power, to yourself, if you're just doing a positive affirmation for yourself, you know, you say, I'm really grateful for like this colder weather today. Like a lot of people aren't liking that. I love it, right? But a lot of people aren't liking that it's colder outside. And you know, I say I'm so grateful for this colder weather because, um, you know, it's a change in the seasons and it's one day closer to the pool opening and um, I, it's not so cold that I can't sit out on my front porch and drink some coffee and watch some shows and make some videos, you know, and I get to wear warmer clothes, which I love warmer clothes. I mean, there's so many things, you know, about it. And um, Boo Radley likes the colder weather and so it makes him happier to be able to run around in the crisp, you know, cool weather. And there's so it's paying it forward and kind of turning things that maybe you're not necessarily grateful in. And Melody Beatty is somebody that has talked about that a lot in her book, 40 Days and 40 Nights. She talks a lot about living in this house that was a money pit and sitting on the floor and being like, I'm so grateful for this house. I'm so grateful for these floors. I'm so grateful for these, this, these walls and really breaking it down, you know? And so, um, in my prayers at night, I go through all my prayers or certain prayers that I do. I do the Lord's Prayer, the Serenity Prayer, and I do the good night prayer, you know, now I lay me down to sleep. I've done that ever since I was a kid. I probably always will. And um, then there's some other prayers that I say from time to time, like um, the fear prayer and recovery and some other step prayers that I do from time to time, depending on what I'm going through. I sometimes say the, sick, the prayer for the sick man in recovery. Um, to help me deal with people in my life that might be driving me a little bit crazy. And um, hold on a second, let me look this up for you. Um, my sponsor got me started saying this a couple years ago um, when I was dealing with somebody that was in active addiction and I was so worried about them and they were like calling me all the time and I didn't really know how to set limits and boundaries with it because I was so worried about them and whatever. And um, so she had me start saying this and it's God, when a person offends me, help me to remember this is a sick person. Help me show the same tolerance, pity and patience that we would cheerfully grant a sick friend. Show me how I can help them. And that's with anybody that might be physically sick, have mental health issues, addiction issues, whatever, right? And to see them as a sick person that can't help themselves or how can I help them or how can I, you know, not just, ah, they're driving me crazy, you know? Um, I think it would have been a really helpful prayer to have known with my relationship with my mother because as much as I loved my mother um, and I was very aware of her mental health issues, there were also things that were very difficult um, where I knew that's, what I had to deal with, but it didn't make it any easier that that's what I had to deal with. And so I can remember just crying, you know, because of the nature of some of my mother's, mother's mental health issues. You know, I, I'm always, I, I always say this, like, I'm not a big believer in sainting somebody when they pass away. And my mother was a very wise person and at times could be very loving and compassionate because of a, a lot of her mental health issues. She could also be very nasty at times and she could also be very challenging at times. And I never really knew what I would get. And then when she was drinking, add that to it, like that even made it more difficult. I think a lot of my mom's drinking was to medicate her mental health issues, which weren't even diagnosed at that point, because um, she didn't really know how to deal with it. And I think it muted a lot of those feelings and emotions that she had going on from trauma that she experienced in her childhood that my mother literally did not start working on childhood trauma, severe t childhood trauma, until she was in her mid-50s after she got sober, you know? And so she carried that around with her all the time. Had I had that prayer, and I mean, I already saw her as a sick person because people would say to me, your mother's sick, she doesn't know what she's doing, your mother's in active alcoholism, she, you know, whatever. I mean, I'd heard that from therapists, I'd heard that from family friends, I'd heard that from my dad, you know, things like that. But to have this prayer to do for somebody to see them as a sick person, and how can I help this sick person just like I would help a friend that has the flu and take them chicken noodle soup or magazines or call them on the phone and ask them if they need a box of Kleenex or something like that, right? Like, how can I help a sick friend that is, um, you know, really going through it? Or can I help them get, you know, therapy or help them change therapists if they need to or see the right physicians? Or do I just need to be a, a lending ear and let those people, you know, just talk to me when they need to talk to me? So anyway, in my prayers every night, there, so that's like one of the prayers I say from time to time. One of the things I've added to my prayers in the last year, because it's become more, I've always, so in recovery we talk about, you know, a relationship with your higher power. You do not have to have one to be sober. I do. I have a relationship with my higher power. 
I don't know what that higher power looks like or is. It's not defined by any doctrine of any church. It's a spiritual higher power that falls underneath the conditions of love, kindness, understanding, compassion, forgiveness, as well as some other things. Um, I do not believe that my God makes junk. I believe that my God is a loving God, a teaching God, but a loving God. And that sometimes my higher power puts me into interesting situations to learn something from later. Um, and I'm not necessarily thankful for that at the time, but I try to make something out of that as I go. So one of the things that I've learned, um, I, I think around the time of Tucker's passing, because through that whole situation, there was a peace and calm that came over me that I just kind of knew were at the end. And I haven't really talked a lot about this because to this day, Tucker's passing is really, really hard for both Alex and I because it was right after, you know, it was like a month and a half, two months after um, the accident and we were like not emotionally in a great place and it just came out of nowhere. He had been sick, but he didn't even die of what he was sick of. And so it just kind of came out of nowhere, like over the period of like two days. And um, there was like this calm and this peace that came over me. And I just, I can remember just like praying, just like praying a lot, you know, speaking to whatever was out there. And I wasn't praying for like fix Tucker. I was praying for like, help me get through this difficult time. Help me be there for my dog that can't be there for himself, you know, and things like that. And there was this amazing peace and serenity that came over me. And I don't know if that came from a higher power, or if that, that came from self-talk. I don't know where that came from, but it came from somewhere. The more I've eliminated chaos and toxicity in my life, and the more I have had centered, centered moments in my life, not centered, centered, um, with, you know, prayer, meditation, gratitude lists, things like that, the more there's like this calmness to me, it's almost like meditation and breathing, you know, where I find myself very still, you know, even my friends will say to me, God, you're just so different than you were five years ago. Like you just, there's moments throughout the day where you're just so calm and peaceful, you know? So one of the things that I have said in the last probably year, year and a half is the first thing I'm grateful for is my relationship with my higher power and for my higher power looking over me, watching me, guiding me and loving me, protecting me, other things. And I'm so grateful for that, you know? Um, I have stopped questioning my higher power. I don't pray for things 15 times. I pray for one thing and I let it go. Um, if there truly is a higher power out there, I don't need to remind my higher power of what I'm praying for. He or she knows or it knows. Um, so that's the other thing, is praying for something one time and letting it go, you know? The next thing I pray for, or I, I'm grateful for, is my life, my health, and my sobriety in that order um, every single day. I say that when I wake up and I say that when I go to sleep at night. And then I go in and I say that I'm grateful for my husband and our marriage and our relationship and him loving me. And I say I'm grateful for Boo Radley and his health and him being here for another day. And I am grateful for our little family. And then I go on and say I'm grateful for our house, our home that protects us and is cozy. And then I go through my friends and my family and YouTube and how grateful I am for YouTube and how grateful I am for books and TV shows. I mean, I go through a whole gratitude list. And that keeps me present-minded in the present and keeps me, you know, right-sized to realize that it's all of those things together that make for this amazing, magical life. And I'm so incredibly grateful for it, you know? So I think this month is always a good month to remember that it's a month of gratitude, you know, and things like that. And maybe we can, you know, practice that a little bit more this month. And for those of you that don't practice gratitude on a regular basis, the magic book, the book Magic by Rhonda Byrne is a great thing to do. I think last November we did that book here, or the November before. It's always a book. I've done it so many times now that I don't want to do it again, honestly. But it's such a good book to get you grounded in gratitude. There's a lot of books out there that are good for that. I think just starting a gratitude list is a fantastic way too, and that's what I plan to do um, this month. I will report back to you tomorrow to see if I started it today. <laughs> there's there's the cliffhanger of the century, right? But um, yeah, I think just to remind us that we, like even, I think the gratitude is really important, maybe not so much on the good days, but on the really tough, difficult days. You know, um, for example, I can remember walking out of the hospital the day that my mom passed away. And because I had so many people that had said things to me, what was going through my head was not, like, I'm so upset, I'm so sad, which I was, but it was, wow, 
she gave me life and I was able to be part of her process of dying. I was able to be sober and right-minded during my mother's passing. I was able to be present. I was privileged enough to have her as a mother. I was so privileged that there were family and friends that were in that room when my mom passed away that loved her as much as I did. Her memory will live on. And I think the reason why it's important not to saint people is because when we do, we lie on their name. My mother was a difficult person. She was challenging at times. She could argue and she didn't know how to pick her battles. But she loved so deeply. She gave the best hugs and she cared about people and loved so deeply. And those are the things that I'm grateful for today. I'm also grateful for the fact that she was challenging and that she was difficult at times because it taught me patience. It taught me that there are times and places to stand up for things. That was something that my mother believed in her entire life, right? So even though I had to be the recipient of that at times, I also learned the importance of that through that. There's gratitude to be found in everything. And I remember getting in my car that night as I was driving home, listening to Bob Dylan, just being, thinking to myself, what a remarkable life that I've had with her as my mother. And even though that was cut short because she passed at 64 and I was 35 years old, almost 36, wow. Wow. You know? So gratitude can completely change our perception of things. It can change the direction of things. It can change how we look at things. And it can really center us. And I think it can t turn, you know, don't it turn your brown eyes blue. My aunt used to sing that song to me because of my eyes. Uh, <laughs> my Aunt Janie. But it um, can also turn our bad days good sometimes. Or at least to put them in perspective. To realize that this too shall pass and the sun will shine again, you know? as Oprah says, and I'm such a believer. I mean, she's not the only one that says this too shall pass. It's a recovery thing, right? But this too shall pass, you know? And um, I think also when I'm going through like really tough days or something in my life passes and things like that, you know, I think about for the grace of God, you know? And um, wow, like I was able to ha be a part of that person's life, you know? Like that's a privilege that we allow people into our lives. When I've gone through breakups in my life, when the dust has settled and I'm not angry anymore, I'm able to look at that and be like, we had some amazing times though, you know? Like, I wouldn't have shared those times with anybody else. I wouldn't have experienced those things had it not been for that person, and I'm really grateful for that, you know? I don't want to live in the bad times anymore, but for those moments, I'm grateful for that. Gratitude is literally a life changer. Gratitude is literally a perception changer. Gratitude is literally something that can give you a completely different perception to the world. And it's amazing. So this month, let's practice gratitude. I brought these meditation books out here with me, but I don't think I'm gonna read them today because I've gone on and on and on. Um, and yeah, so uh, anyway, good start to November. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys so much and I will see you tomorrow. I'm so thankful for you. I'm so grateful for you. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.